Good evening, good evening, my friends. Today, today I want to continue to share about this subject of trying to accuse people that God has appointed or put into ministry and when when they make a mistake uh, or whatever it is that they do, you take it upon yourself to expose them and overthrow them and whatever it is that we love to do as uh, <laughs> immature believers. So 1 Samuel 24, in, in, in this book, a uh, little background, you know, Saul was anointed king by Samuel, who God had shown and said, hey, look, here's the guy. And Saul walked away, he, he prophesied, and he did all these things. And then in 1 Samuel 24, he's pursuing David. But um, he also has, you know, so Saul has done whatever he did. The Lord told him that he was going to rend the kingdom from him and give it to David. The Lord, uh, you know, had had taken his spirit from him and um, and sent an evil spirit to him. Or maybe he didn't take his spirit from him. I don't know, but it, it, uh, he sent an evil spirit to him to torment him. And that's why David was um, playing the harp. So it doesn't sound like the spirit of the Lord was with him. But, and then also, um, Saul had killed um, all the priests, you know, because they helped David. I mean, Saul did a lot of really messed up stuff. And, like, if there was anyone that you could accuse, it would have been Saul. But let's look at what happens in 1 Samuel 24, verse 5. It says, so David, he's hiding in this cave, and then Saul goes into the cave to relieve himself or go to the bathroom or take a nap, whatever it is that he does. And while he's in there, David cuts his robe. And then here's where it comes in. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this to my lord the king. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. So, after Saul had done all these things, and the Lord had even, um, you know, given David this opportunity to test him, to see what he would do, um, David was not allowed to touch Saul or to um, kill him. You know, and and I think it's I think it's a really good scripture for us to, or or a, a situation for us to contemplate. And think about, like, okay, if David wasn't allowed to attack Saul, who was, like, if the, <laughs> this dude, if there was anyone that you would, you would think, like, man, okay, this guy is clearly wrong and reprobate and, and whatever. If there was anyone you could attack, I feel like it would have been Saul. But David wasn't even allowed to attack him. So interesting to me when a, a, a king like Saul, uh, a person who anointed by God, put into leadership, put into you know a position of authority, and then totally blows it, rebels against God, it has the spirit of witchcraft upon him, um, spirit of rebellion, and trying to kill David, kills the priesthood, kills, you know, does uh, disobeys God's word and refuses to accept responsibility when he makes a mistake just blames other people if this guy is not allowed to be attacked then why are we thinking that we can attack people okay like how is it that we've taken it upon ourselves to attack people who God has chosen and anointed and, and and put into positions of authority. And, you know, we don't know how they got where they are. Like, all I know is that if someone's blessed enough to be able to build something for the kingdom of God, 
uh, and magnifying the name of Jesus, saying that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Like, I'm not, I don't, I mean, can we really take it upon ourselves to attack those people whenever we hear things about them or we even see things that they do? Even if you see things that they've done and, and it's clear, like, it's still not your place to do it, okay? It's still not your job to attack and discredit and to expose. Let the Lord do his thing. Don't bring judgment on yourself. I promise you, if you take it upon yourself to go after other people who you think are um, not, you know, professing the gospel of Christ and that they are leading people astray and that they're whatever they are, uh, false prophet, false teacher, whatever it is that you think they are, if you take it upon yourself to expose them, you're going to bring judgment on yourself. Um, I mean, you know, unless they're clearly teaching something contrary to the gospel, but you know, you better have proof. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And even if that's the case, like, is it really fruitful for you to expose people? I mean, come on. You know, like, is that what we we are called to spend our time doing? If you get into a circumstance and you're in a, a circle and you're trying to protect people in your circle, yeah, I understand or, or whatever, but, you know, that's just not what we're called to do. Focus on Jesus. You know, the light exposes the darkness. You don't have to expose the darkness. You follow the light and the darkness gets exposed. It's it's going to happen. And there's a day coming when the judgment's going to expose everything. We don't, it's not up to us, you know. We got to focus on seeking and saving that which was lost. And if an opportunity presents itself where we have to rebuke someone, Go for it, but don't be looking for it. Amen.